Good morning and happy anniversary, Faith Methodist Church. I bring you greetings through the camera into your homes or wherever you may be this morning. I bring you greetings also from your sister churches in the Trinity Annual Conference. I want to thank Pastor Rafe and your leaders for the privilege of being part of your 54th anniversary celebrations. The book called Daniel in the Bible was written well over 2,000 years ago, before any of us could have imagined this current pandemic that we are in. But someone has said, and I think correctly, God's very ancient words have a way of being both timely and timeless. And so I pray that as we think together about God's ancient words here in Daniel chapter 12, that we will hear for ourselves an encouraging word that is timely, both for a church that celebrates 54 years of her life and for each of us as individuals who are wondering how life in this COVID-19 pandemic will work itself out. Please join me in prayer before we read God's Word. Father, thank you for your faithfulness over these 54 years. And even though we may still be kept out of our physical worship sanctuaries, we pray that your word will never be kept out of our ears and our hearts. So please stir our hearts and our minds as we consider your ancient words in Daniel chapter 12 this morning. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, who is your living word and who became human for us. Amen. Let's read together God's Word in Daniel chapter 12, verses 1 to 6. At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, roll up and seal the words of the scroll until the time of the end. Many will go here and there to increase knowledge. Then I, Daniel, looked, and there before me stood two others, one on this bank of the river and one on the opposite bank. One of them said to the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river, How long will it be before these astonishing things are fulfilled? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How long will it be? Did that question in verse 6 resonate with you? It is a question that many of us had been asking for weeks before the circuit breaker was finally ended. And we kept asking the same question during phase one, wondering when phase one would come to an end. And today, although we are in phase two, we are still wondering how long, how long before phase two will be over and we can get back to some kind of new normality in phase three. How long more before we can more freely return to our church buildings or, or, or have a church anniversary lunch together? How long more before we can get together and, and open our mouths in singing songs of praise together? How long before we can travel together for a church camp or maybe a holiday together? How long? How long? How long more? In the vision here in Daniel chapter 12, 
Daniel hears somebody asking this same sort of question, how long more? Now, the kind of troubling situation in Daniel's day was, was not a worldwide virus pandemic. But there are some similarities. Look at verse 1. There will be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. I'm sure during this COVID-19 season, you have heard different people using phrases like, this crisis we are going through is unprecedented, never before in our lifetime, etc., etc. So also here in Daniel, God was preparing the readers for, quote, a time of distress such as has not happened, unquote. For Daniel's readers over 2,000 years ago, the particular world crisis that they were going through was not a virus pandemic. It was more like an impending world war. There were two superpowers and they were pushing hard their own competing agenda. And they were forcing the smaller nations and ordinary people to take sides. And if you did not want to get involved, well, by law, you had to get involved and support your own government or your king or your president, or you would be fined, incarcerated, or worse. At that time, even religious gatherings and worship had to be stopped if you were not in support of your ruling government's strategies. So maybe there are some similarities between our current COVID-19 pandemic and the situation so long ago for Daniel's readers. I wonder whether some of you remember what our Singapore PM, Lee Hsien Lung, said when he addressed our nation in early June. He warned us that the growing conflict between the US and China may reach a stage where little nations like Singapore may find it impossible to remain neutral. If the animosity escalates, we might have to choose between trade agreements, travel agreements that side with one superpower or the other. And whatever way we choose, we will lose out in some way or other. And so he urged us to be prepared, to be prepared for our national lives, our individual lives, to suffer for a while. In short, these were very distressing times for Daniel's readers over 2,000 years ago and distressing times for us today. And in such distressing times, it is natural to ask, how long? How long more? How long before this season of distress and trouble is finally fulfilled, finally completed, finally over and done with? An answer to that question follows in verse 7. We are told that the crisis will finally be fulfilled, finished, run out or end after a time, times, and half a time. But what does this cryptic answer mean? Now, many Bible interpreters have offered their guesses, which I would be happy to explain to you. But I'm sure some of you listening will be even happier to hear that I will not explain these different guesses to you this morning. What I will explain, however, is Daniel's own understanding of that phrase. Look at verse 8. Daniel says, I heard, but I did not understand. In other words, even Daniel could not understand what that cryptic phrase really meant. Now, Daniel is clearly presented to us in the Bible as a very wise person. If you read the stories in this book called Daniel, you will hear again and again the description of Daniel and his friends as being very wise and discerning, wiser than any of the Babylonian advisors and magicians. And even here in chapter 12, we read in verse 3 the promise 
that those who are wise will shine like the stars forever. So the book of Daniel clearly wants to encourage us to be one of the wise, just as Daniel and his friends were wise. But what does it mean to be wise? Daniel 12 gives us an answer. There are many things that the wise understand about God and life on earth. But there are many specific questions that even the wise cannot understand. How long, how long exactly before the crisis will finally come to end? And how long before God's promise of a new world where the wise will shine like the bright stars forever? How long more? Wise Daniel did not know, did not understand the answer. And verse 8 in the closing chapter of the book wants us to understand this point. To understand that being wise does not mean being able to understand everything. How long more before the end of suffering on earth? Why not sooner? Daniel does not know, does not understand the answer. Are any of you good at numbers? Little Bobby was not good at numbers. His teacher said to him, Bobby, listen carefully, 29 and a half and 13. What's the difference? And Bobby replied, yes, ma'am, I agree. What's the difference? Who cares? Well, most of us know how to calculate the difference between 29 and a half and 13. Nobody today really knows the difference between the numbers in verses 11 and 12. After Daniel says that he does not understand the answer to his question, how long, the angel gives a longer reply. Part of this reply comes in verse 11, where he says that the duration of the suffering and the persecution would last 1,290 days. So how long before the suffering will finally come to an end? 1,290 days. But then verse 12 gives another number, 1,335 days. What is the difference between these two numbers? And I'm not here talking about the mathematical difference. Verse 12 says the blessed must wait 1,335 days. But why the difference in number? If... In verse 11, the end of evil comes in 1,290 days. Why must the blessed wait 1,335 days? What does this all mean? Again, there have been many guesses, some more plausible than others. But the truth is this. No one living on earth today really knows or understands the difference. Now, some claim to know. They say, Daniel could not understand, but we can. The book was sealed for Daniel, but it is open for us. Now, quite apart from the arrogance of such an assumption, I think the attempt to guess what these numbers mean in literal detail completely misunderstands the point of Daniel 12. What is that point? The point is this. Even the wise person like Daniel cannot understand everything. The wise understand that there are some details we cannot yet understand. And one of those details we cannot understand is how long more before this crisis finally comes to an end. But there are other things the wise in Daniel 12 are able to understand. Look at verse 4. The angel tells Daniel to roll up and seal the words of the scroll until the end. Now, what does it mean to roll up and seal something up? There are different possibilities. When you seal something, you may want to keep the contents a secret. For example, the examination papers are set by the school board and, and they are placed into a sealed envelope 
to ensure that no one is able to open that envelope until the exam day. On this interpretation, the message of Daniel should be kept a secret, sealed, until the appropriate time, the time of testing or examination. Its message then is meant only for times when one is suffering under the cruel hand of monsters and tyrants. In better times, when one is not facing the examination of persecution and trials, then perhaps the sober message of Daniel can be kept sealed or under wraps. The wise know when God's message in Daniel needs to be heard. We don't have to preach the somewhat sobering message of Daniel every single Sunday. We seal the somber message of Daniel for times when monsters and beasts rear their ugly heads in our society. But there are other reasons why we put a seal on things. We seal something not always to keep it a secret, but to validate it. A company puts its seal or its chop on a document in order to validate its authenticity. The contents are not kept a secret. They have the seal of authority. And closely related to this is the idea of personal commitment. The deal was closed and sealed with a handshake or a signature. The person who places his seal on the document makes a promise to honour the contents of that document. To sign or put your seal or chop on something is to commit yourself to it, to honour and uphold its contents. The angel tells Daniel to seal the message of the scroll, to honour it, to commit himself to it, to guard it, to believe it. Seal these words in your heart right till the end of time. This is what the wise do. Now, you may disregard my choice of the phrase, watch, if it doesn't help you. I only chose it because it begins with the letter W, just like the word for wise. To watch over something is to guard something. And I think this is what God tells wise Mr. Daniel to do to seal or to guard God's word securely in his heart. Watch over God's word carefully, seal it, secure it. The wise watch and seal God's word in their hearts to the very end. And what was God's word to Daniel? There isn't time today to rush you through this book of 12 chapters. So let me just summarize it. God's word to Daniel and his readers in their very troubled and distressful times was to assure them that God was still in control. Even if they did not know exactly how long the suffering would go on before the end, God knew because God is in control. It would last for a period of time set by God. A time, times, and half a time. We might not understand what that actually means in detailed terms of our days, weeks, months, or years. But God knows. God promises that the end will come. And at the end, the wise will arise and shine like the stars forever. And in the meantime, the wise will seal or secure God's assuring word in their hearts. Like a guard who watches over a place to keep it safe and secure, so let all of us who are wise guard and watch God's word secure it within our hearts. And now finally, and, and it is repeated twice in these closing verses, verse 9 and then again in the very last verse of the book, verse 13, the wise will walk on. Walk on is also my way of trying to stick with the letter W. In Hebrew, the verb actually represents the English verb to walk. And so God ends 
by telling Daniel, as for you, walk on. Go your way. Walk on till the end. Don't give up. Walk on with hope in your hearts. Now, Liverpool fans, there's no need to stand up. YNWA, but so please control yourselves. Don't get distracted. Let's get back to God's Word. Let's all be wise. Keep watch. Seal God's Word in our hearts and walk on to the end. Economists today are saying that the economic downturn brought on by COVID-19 will be so much more devastating than the 1997 and 2008 financial crises. They think that it will be much more like the so-called Great Depression of 1929. And some are saying it's going to be even worse than the Great Depression of 1929. That Great Economic Depression in 1929 lasted for 10 years. Let me close by sharing a testimony of someone who lived during the Great Depression of the 1930s. His name was Ira. In addition to living through the Great Depression, Ira himself suffered from personal depression. Ira married the daughter of the senior pastor, and Ira later himself was ordained a full Pentecostal minister. They were blessed with a son, but they would suffer the pain of divorce before their son turned 10. Ira's heart was broken. He suffered depression. He questioned whether he could even or should even continue to serve as a pastor. I suspect he felt ashamed and a failure. His future was so uncertain. Later, Ira also faced the uncertainty of having to go under the knife to remove a brain tumour. Like the wise in Daniel chapter 12, there were some things, maybe many things, that Ira could not understand. How long more would this Great Depression last? How long more before the crisis would end and a new one comes to take its place? But in the midst of all the uncertainty and the sorrow of life, Ira kept watch he secured God's word in his heart and he kept walking on right to the very end. Ira Stanfield composed a song that encourages all of us to do the same. We may not understand why or how long our suffering on earth will last, but we walk on by faith, believing that God knows. We find hope and courage to walk on because the one who holds tomorrow, the one who holds the future is the one who holds our hand. Today we celebrate 54 years of God's working through Faith Methodist Church. How many more years will there be before the end? What will the future hold for us? We may not have any detailed answers to those questions, but we can all be wise. We can watch and we can keep God's word in our hearts and walk on to the end. So I believe we're going to be closing by singing Ira's song. And as we do so, may we be encouraged to keep walking on to the end of this current crisis and beyond this crisis into the next however many years God chooses to let us serve Him here on earth. Let's join together in prayer. Father, we continue to cry out to You with, with the whole world during this current pandemic, praying for Your mercy and help. We do not understand why this is happening. We do not understand how to control it so many things beyond our control. But we pray, Lord, for your help and your mercy 
courage and wisdom to do what we can to help one another keep walking on with courage and faith and hope, helping one another, loving one another, being kind and generous and helpful to each other. Help us to walk on faithfully in this way, however long this current crisis continues. We thank you, dear Lord, for your word. May we guard your word always in our heart and find strength to press on. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>